Hello again, fearless gamers. This is Matt the Clown with yet another episode of Back to Basics. Um, I believe this is the fifth episode. And in this episode, I'm going to be giving you a brief overview of the next step, as the last step was base coating and washing. The next step is essentially highlighting. Now, there are a couple of ways to approach it, but um, I'm going to be showing you just one way. Um, the way I'll be showing you is just a direct highlight from our washed miniature that we worked on last time. But another approach would be to uh, take what I'm about to do one step further by using uh, just progressively brighter shades of paint. Um, the reason I'll be using the te the uh, uh, approach that I'm using here is just because it's kind of what the uh, the paint scheme I'm going for is going to look like. If you uh, like, a, you know, if you remember, I'm going for an alabaster look, and uh, if you look up alabaster on uh, you know the internet, as it were, uh, it's not super white. And uh, there's, it's pretty clear that there's some black and, and pink and beige undertones just beneath the white. So only one layer of, uh, of um, highlights really needs to be utilized. However, if I were making this model a blue or a green, uh, I would probably do a, a, a broad highlight layer of... Um, you know, the, the, the green that I used before washing, if I did in fact use a green before washing, uh, if I didn't green before washing, then I would use a, a broad layer of, um, of the darkest green that I, that I have, uh, in the same manner that I'm about to use the white. And then from there, what I would do is I would highlight, um, smaller and smaller areas with uh, brighter and brighter colors. Um, I'll probably do a uh, second video about this sort of thing um, with a better example of, uh, of you know, a, a broader version of highlighting, uh, but that'll probably be a little bit down the line. This is just to give you a basic idea of where to go after you wash because you don't want to just cover up the whole model. You want to pick and choose the areas that you're highlighting because if you just cover up the whole model the base coating and the, the washing were kind of a waste of your time because you're losing those deep shadows that you were building with those two steps. Now I am just going to rinse my brush off real quick because it's always good to have a nice clean brush, nice uh, wet brush for this sort of thing. Now what I'm going to be highlighting in is Skull White. I don't think they make Skull White anymore. I think the new line version is uh, White Scar. I could be wrong, please correct me if I am. But this is what I'm using because this is what I have, and uh, I don't like to spend money when I don't have to. I'm sure many of you agree. Now you should be keeping, and this is something I'm sure I've mentioned in previous videos, but you should be keeping some kind of cup or jar of water at your painting station because you should be going in there fairly often. So let me just get in here with the white. Get some paint on my brush, wipe it off a little bit there. Uh, you don't need your, your brush loaded with paint for this step. In fact, uh, sometimes it's better not to be. So I'm gonna start with the top of this here jetpack because it's a nice flat area that I can show you. Now you see the detail on those X's, these here. Uh, I'm gonna be doing those in red. So I'm not gonna do the, I'm not gonna do any white in those, but you see, here, how there's that, you know, the wash got in there. I'm not gonna go right up to that edge. Instead, 
I'm going to sort of leave a little bit of space. Yeah, I would have liked to have left a little bit more, but it's hard to do this with the camera right up next to me. But you leave a little bit of space so that the uh, that dark X will still be there. So again, over here, and always. Uh, remember that it doesn't have to go fast. Going fast can sometimes make things more difficult and screw up your paint job. If you're not a fast painter and someone tries to give you crap about it, don't hang out with that person because they're impatient and probably not fun to be around. Now, highlighting is... I might have just bumped the camera if I did, I'm sorry. Highlighting is one of the um, simpler aspects, really. It's just a matter of you need to sort of understand where to go with it. The highlight layer needs to be smaller than the shading layer. Why? Well, because if you, like I said, if you make the highlight layer the same size as the shading layer, you're going to lose all the shading. And you don't want that because of all the things I said in the second episode of Back to Basics that discussed shadows and lighting. If you haven't watched that video, go back and watch it. It's kind of important. So you can probably start to see what I did there. I might come back and highlight you know, over here a little bit more thoroughly, but that's the general idea, is you take a smaller area than was dark, and you bring it up. Now, if this were a blue, or even if I wanted to give this a light coat of white and then come back with you know, even more white, I'm not going to do every area that I've painted here. I'm going to do a lesser area. You know, every layer of highlights that gets brighter needs to be smaller than the previous. Because if you look at you know, the way light behaves, as I discussed in my second episode of Back to Basics, um, things get brighter and brighter and brighter the closer you get to the light. Now, another thing that I will be discussing, uh, I'll, I'll touch on it briefly in this video, but that I'll, I'll go more into greater depth in uh, another video, is picking a light source, something I also touched upon in the uh, second episode of Back to Basics. When you're painting and doing your highlights, it's important that you decide how you want to do it. And, and what I mean by that is you need to decide where the light is coming from for your paint scheme. Now, what I mean by that is you need to highlight towards a light source. You know, if you look at the way things are in real life, uh, colors are brighter the closer you get to light. So, if you just sort of, let's say I wanted to bring this brighter in this direction, so like the highest highlights were over here, but then I put the highest highlights over here on this side, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense when you're looking at it, because the light isn't really going to behave that way if it's coming from both directions. If you have light coming from this way and this way, the whole thing is going to be pretty much the same level of brightness, while down here, sorry, i got to keep an eye on where I'm uh, placing things, down here would be darker than up here. You wouldn't have as many bright highlights uh, you know, on the undersides of here on the chest and, and here on the neck. You know, the, the upper parts would all be the brightest parts, because essentially the light would be coming from the top at two angles. Um, for these, uh, for, for these marines, I'm not, um, utilizing too complex a highlighting scheme. That is to say, I'm not picking a specific source of light because I'm not doing a super complex highlighting scheme. You know, the, uh, the white only gets so bright in this, and I'm just kind of being casual about it. But if you look at my Commander Dante on our Facebook page, there are photos. Um, 
you can clearly see which direction the light is coming from. And, uh, it's just, it's reflected by the highlights as I placed them. Now, you might think that's not going to work out too well when you're doing it, because, you know, you're thinking, oh, well, what if the actual light, like, let's say if you highlight from over here, but my light source is coming from here, it's not going to look right, it'll look just fine. It's an optical illusion. It doesn't really matter where the actual real-world light is coming from because you are lighting it in a more specific manner. Now, on a spot like... Oh, sorry. On a spot like here on the jetpacks, uh, it's a little difficult to get your highlights up there without getting it all over the place uh, if you're using the tip of the brush. So what you want to do is you want to load the brush with the paint and sort of edge it and by that I mean paint it with the edge of the bristles and what that'll do is it'll put the paint on there without going any further past it so you can see I've highlighted that area I'm blocking my light I've highlighted that area while keeping the vent part of that uh, of, of the jetpack there still relatively dark. Uh, I may or may not go back and highlight those individual vent bits later on, but I'll be using essentially the same technique. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing here on this side. And this is a nice technique to use on not just things around vents, but if you have uh, a model with hair or uh, something like hair. For example, the uh, Striking Scorpion Zeldar model has, I'm gonna use this hand, has, uh, you know, the hair there. You'd essentially do the same thing to get your highlights on that, uh, just to keep that depth. It makes depth a little bit easier. Um, I am running out of battery power on this camera. I'm gonna try and get this video finished before uh, the battery runs out. If it runs out, I will finish later. But yeah, I mean, it's... Honestly, I don't feel like I need to really go over the whole of the model. I'm just gonna go over a couple of more uh, major parts, like here on the neck. You're definitely going to want to highlight up on top, unless the light is coming from below him, in which case, well, I leave that to you to figure out, because it's not difficult to figure out once you have an idea of how light behaves. But yeah, you get that lighting up at the top here, and you can see just looking at them, there's, you just look at that. That's actually a really great example of highlighting versus uh, shading. Uh, that top bit there around his neck is super bright where the light's hitting it, and then uh, I may or may not shade around this area, you know, just below that, if I do, I'm going to do it uh, with a thinner coat, so that this here is the brightest point. But you can just sort of see how that, you know, just, just taking a look at that, even on the, this mediocre camera with this mediocre lighting, you can already see how much, uh, how much more that pops, how much more three-dimensional that looks, which sounds like a foolish phrase to use when you're talking about a three-dimensional model, but... Uh, is actually pretty accurate just because you're talking about a paint scheme. Now, I'm doing a similar thing on the beaver of his helmet. And see how that's behaving there? Now, I'm probably going to do more of the beaver. In fact, I'm certainly going to do more of the beaver. But I'm giving you just the briefest of overlooks now because I want to finish this video before the uh, battery runs out on me. And I don't want this video to get to be a half hour again, because it doesn't really need to be. This aspect of painting is... It's intimidating, but really, really simple, I swear to you. It's really simple. It's just a matter of being careful where you place the brightest points 
and how powerful you make your brightest points. Now, just the basic thing I've done here is clearly my light source is fairly ambient, which means it's kind of coming from all over the place, which is something that happens in real life. But you can just, you know, I, I hope this has made some amount of sense uh, for what I'm trying to do. I'm going to highlight that a little bit, and that a little bit, and... Now, one way to highlight an area less thoroughly than uh, than another is to touch very lightly with your brush. Now, that actually looks really awful on the camera, but in person it looks pretty solid. And uh, to compensate for that, if it doesn't look good enough, I'll probably just add more layers to the places that I want to be super bright. So, that's just a sort of opening, uh, <clears throat> sorry about that guys, uh, unfortunately the camera ran out of power, I'm not really sure where it cut out, but as I was saying, this is just essentially a uh, quick overview of highlighting, um, and uh, I'm, I'm almost definitely going to do a more in-depth look at it. Uh, some point down the line, but for now, I'm going to just give you this brief uh, overview of it, partially because I want to see if anyone understands what I'm getting at, <laughs> and another part to, to because I am, like I said, a big proponent of... Uh, self-discovery and figuring out what works for you. If you have any further questions about the matter, if you don't understand the uh, picking a light source aspect of what I said, by all means feel free to leave a comment or get in touch with us privately here on YouTube or on Facebook and I'll try my best to sort of explain it further. Um, and if I can't explain it via messages, well then I'll have no choice but to make the, the uh, further in-depth highlighting video uh, sooner than, than uh, I expected. So please uh, let us know what you think, leave a comment, uh, like the video if you like it, uh, dislike it if you hate it but we'd rather you didn't, <laughs> and uh, please by all means get in touch with us, uh, subscribe, and just keep us, uh, keep us knowing whether or not you like what we're doing. Uh, but that's uh, that's it for this video. So until next time, fearless gamers, take care.